We're very happy now to continue with our conference and the second talk of today. We have Gleb Kotusov from DAISY. He will tell us about generalized affine SL2 go-down model. Uh, thank you um, very much for the introduction. And I'd also like to thank the uh, organizers for uh, making this uh, workshop happen. So yeah, I'll be uh, talking about the generalized affine SL2 go-down model. Uh, which is based on, on a recent paper with me and uh, uh, Sergei Lukianov. So an important feature of a two-dimensional uh, classical integrable field theory is the presence of an infinite number of local integrals of motion. So these are uh, dynamical quantities uh, which are given by an integral over a tens of density built from say the fundamental to fields phi as well as there are uh, derivatives in T or in X. And they obey the special property that um, as a consequence of their equations of motion, they're conserved. So in the um, uh, first principles quantization of a, of a field theory, among other things, it requires one to uh, construct the uh, Hilbert space, as well as the quantum versions of these uh, dynamical quantities. These would be certain operators, which are given by an integral over a suitably regularized density built from the quantum field phi and its partial derivatives. Um, and the uh, uh, condition that they uh, are conserved with time will be just the fact that they uh, commute with the Hamiltonian. Actually, in our integrability, um, we sort of, we require stronger condition and that's the fact that they mutually commute among, amongst themselves. Um, there is a method for constructing these uh, local integrals of motion um, known as the quantum inverse scattering method. And it's based on the uh, famous works of Baxter and others in the eighties uh, on two dimensional statistical uh, lattice systems. It works well for some cases such as for instance, the sine Gordon model. However, it's um, turns out to be difficult to apply to certain theories due to a problem issue called uh, the problem with non ultra locality. This is just in fact a symptom of the uh, strong ultraviolet divergences of the theory which make it difficult to define um, the quantum operators, the commuting quantum operators um, in the QFT. A simple example of this is the complex uh, sine Gordon model, uh, as well as uh, the class of classical integrable nonlinear signal models. So I'd like to just give you a, well, a, a taste of what I mean by being uh, difficult to quantize. So, I'll consider one of the simplest of theories, uh, which is the Owen nonlinear signal model. So it's, it's the simplest uh, uh, type of uh, nonlinear signal model. Uh, so a generic nonlinear signal model turns out to be classically, in their, uh, cl classically um, scale invariant field theory, conformal field theory, class on the classical level. And so as a result, the Lorentz min plus minus two components of the stress energy momentum tensor are chiral in the sense that T only depends on T plus X and T bar only depends on T minus X as a consequence of the uh, classical equations of motion. It follows immediately that any um, nonlinear supermodel has an infinite number of uh, conserved uh, charges, which are just given by integrals um, over powers of the uh, stress energy uh, momentum tensor. The Owen nonlinear supermodel is a particularly simple uh, NLSM. Uh, Lagrangian is basically just that of a free field theory of uh, free and interacting fields. And the interaction is introduced by a nonlinear constraint that n1 squared plus n2 squared plus n n squared is equal to one. Here I prefer to use, and in what follows, I prefer to use um, like kind derivatives rather than dt and dx. Um, so the Lagrangian that takes this form. Um, it's a classical integrable field theory, and the lax representation was known since the uh, 70s, and it follows from the results of Zakharov Mikhailov. However, it turns out that if one um, extracts the local IM from the lax um, matrix, just following the standard procedure of um, taking the trace of L squared at one of the poles, then the local IM exactly coincide with these uh, over here. And so, as a result, uh, with the problem of quantizing uh, nonlinear signal models, um, sorry, with you're constructing the quantum operators, quantum local integrals of motion. Classical integrability doesn't, uh, doesn't give us very much. And one has to work directly with the uh, Q of T in order to construct these commuting families.
the classical, the quantum integrability of the other and sigma models was sort of uh, proved in the, in the uh, pioneering work of uh, Polikov. Polikov is, in fact, um, one, has many, uh, one of the uh, starters uh, of the study of nonlinear sigma models, and he has a lot of classic papers uh, on the subject. What he showed is that um, this conservation law, so non trivial conservation law, taking into account the quantum anomalies, such as um, the chiral anomaly, which is, uh, gives rise to this uh, beta function, uh, and using the fact that the model is Owen symmetric, has a global Owen symmetry, you show that this uh, conservation law becomes uh, this formula here, which, yeah, as you can see, involves the beta function as well as this coefficient gamma that was not determined and uh, is just a coefficient connected with the anomaly. Sorry uh, for interrupting. What, what do you mean by chiral anomaly? Because there are no problems. I, I mean breaking of classical scale invariance. I, I mean the, the gener dynamical generalization, uh, generation of mass, the non-zero of the beta function. Sorry. Um, in, in the paper, Polikov calls it the chiral anomaly. So he's his, uh, I guess, his notation. But um, yeah, up, up to this, this is a spin to tensor density. Uh, which I guess wasn't important. The, the fact that the conservation law takes this form was already enough for him. Uh, and it follows immediately that this integral of motion here uh, is conserved, um, is conserved in time. And these are extra quantum corrections. And this was enough for, for Polikov to argue, for instance, for the scatterized, uh, factorized scattering of, of the theory. Uh, Polikov um, used some sort of ad hoc method for constructing this uh, I three, and not, not a systematic method, and he ends the paper saying, "Well, perhaps there is a uh, scientific way of building these local intervals of motion in an in a integral quantum field theory." Uh, however, I, I'm afraid, uh, like even 45 years after this paper uh, was um, written, uh, I guess the community uh, um, uh, is not yet, uh, well, hasn't yet fully answered this question. However, the situation is sort of better when we consider conformal field theory. So to this end, let's suppose our um, massive, uh, our massive uh, Q of T can be considered as the deformation of a conformal field theory that governs its uh, ultraviolet fixed point. So to, to get to the ultraviolet fixed point, one can take the correlation length to infinity. However, it's also more convenient to sort of consider the field theory on a space-time cylinder where the x-coordinate is compactified with some radius r and the physical quantities depend only on the ratio r divided by the correlation length. And instead of taking the correlation length to infinity, one can equivalently just take r to be zero. Local integrals of motion generally take this form where t and theta satisfy some conservation or d plus t, to theta, d plus t is equal to d minus theta. Uh, and I prefer just to always label the Lorentz spin of the, uh, uh, of the um, tensor densities by positive index s. So instead of a negative label, I just I put a bar on top of the t and I let s be greater or equal to uh, one. And I just uh, label the negative tensor densities like the Lorentz minus two spin component is uh, uh, just with a bar. And then in the UV limit, oh sorry, Jesus Christ. Um, yeah, uh, in the UV limit, um, this, uh, this this quantity is dimensionless and they become certain operators acting in the uh, space of states of the conformal field field. As we know, um, the conformal field theory um, possesses chiral fields, which, which um, so left and right moving fields um, as a consequence of the uh, equations of motion. And it turns out that these two fields form two independent algebras. In general, it's, it would be a um, sort of Virasoro algebra, but sometimes you have um, highest tensor densities, which aren't expressible in terms of the stress energy momentum tensor. And then more generally, you have a double E algebra. So the algebra of extended conformal symmetry is just um, given by the tensor product of the independent algebras generated by these uh, holomorphic, uh, sorry, chiral currents. And the Hilbert space can be classified according to the reduced representations of, of this algebra. And it takes this uh, tensor product structure. Then the local IM form a set of mutually commuting operators, say IS. It's given by an integral over these uh, chiral fields. And it acts in just this left part of the, um, uh, of the Verma module for the uh, extended conformal symmetry algebra. And uh, it turns out, well, I, I guess 
the construction of these operators, the commuting, commuting family of operators in a, um, in a redu reduced representation of, say, the Virasori algebra or, or, or W algebra is a well-defined mathematical problem. Although it's well-defined, one might still ask um, how it is technically uh, possible. Um, well, it turns out there's a well-understood algorithm that has been around since the uh, 80s and 90s and was developed in the context of the total-like theories, and in particular, the KDD integral structure. Uh, it's it's well known, uh, and it's well. Yeah, I guess it's uh, excitingly it's been used in some recent applications uh, for studying duality uh, in nonlinear simulation, the deformed ON models and integral CPN models, and, and very recently in the most supersymmetric uh, coset models uh, in particular. I mean, just uh, for instance, uh, one of the major arguments for the uh, duality relation in the ON models is that the CFT the the, uh, the CFT point, um, the uh, deformed ON model, and the uh, total like theory share the same integral structure. I'd like to explain this algorithm with a simple example, and ideally, I, I'd, I'd like to use the O3 nonlinear signal model. However, the issue is that it doesn't, well, have a sort of nice uh, UV fixed point. It just becomes sort of trivial free field theory. And the corrections to that behavior are given in terms of the uh, running, co running coupling constant, which is a, um, a complicated function, say, of the scale of R. So for this reason, we consider a deformation with this deformation parameter kappa. And you can see that when kappa is equal to zero, one can just get rid of this term here, identify one over kappa with the um, so, uh, coupling constant, one over 2g squared, and it just becomes the uh, um, Lagrangian over the O3 nonlinear signal model. Um, uh, so, yeah, once we solve this theory, you can also, of course, get results of the O3 nonlinear signal model by a careful taking of the uh, limit by kappa goes to zero. Um, the target manifold, um, uh, so when kappa goes to one, it's, the sort of model is called a sausage model because the ta target manifold resembles a long sausage where the tips are a distance um, logarithm of one minus kappa apart. Um, that's why it's called the sausage model. Uh, um, so although the model was introduced in Fatih and Nofra Zamalochika, it turned out the classical inference of tubability, the lax connection was uh, only obtained uh, 19 years after the original paper in, uh, in Lukianov's work. So this theory in general has a, um, due to dimensional transmutation because of the UV divergences, it has a ma ma mass parameter. And uh, in order to take the UV fixed point, one needs to consider the um, beta function. And uh, it takes this form for the renormalized coupling kappa. One can see when that one R goes to zero, kappa would, would tend to uh, one from the negative direction, uh, from the lower direction. This luma, as I already mentioned, the cigar becomes, um, well, the sausage becomes two uh, cigars, which are, which are um, the distance between them is very long, logarithm one minus kappa. And so the UV uh, fixed point is just two independent Hamilton cigars. And one can introduce complex coordinates, uh, U, so just the complex coordinate, where the absolute value measures the distance along the length of the cigar, while the argument measures the um, it's an angular variable that goes around the uh, cylinder sort of. And the Lagrangian is, is, is given by uh, this uh, simple uh, expression. As is expected, the theory is being an informal invariant field theory. The classical field theory possesses uh, uh, fields, parallel fields, uh, which I label as W, M, W, and bar. W2 is just the Lorentz plus two spin component of the stress energy momentum tensor. And they have uh, important, uh, uh, three important uh, properties. First of all, they're local. They're just differential polynomials, spin M differential polynomials on partial U and partial U star. They're chiral as a consequence of the equations of motion and they're independent. Um, the last point is actually extremely important because for any field theory, say for instance, let's take the stress and classical invariant field theory. Let's take the stress energy momentum tensor T squared, T cubed, T fourth, this will give you a whole tower of current currents. Uh, these WM obey a special property in that no lower WM can be expressed, oh, no, no higher W current can be expressed in terms of a differential polynomial of the lower ones. So in some sense, they're sort of independent. Yeah, I've given some examples. 
So as I mentioned, so these are W2, W3, um, the bar currents are obtained just by turning partial plus into partial minus, the, the formula is identical. I, have to, I want to emphasize that there's some ambiguity. So I can always multiply, multiply W2 by some constant. And so, so this is this expression, I just took this constant, as you can see here. And for W3 also, I can always add some constant times the partial of W2 to W3. And this will also be a W3 current. That would be car or local independent. And I just fix this by making W3 as simple as possible so that it you know, fits into one line of the presentation. And these fields, they just, it follows immediately from locality and chirality that they form a um, close Poisson bracket algebra and similar to W bar and the two Poisson bracket algebras that are independent. Now, unfortunately, uh, the fields that I showed, the expressions I showed you in the previous slide for W2, W3, they're not very convenient for quantization. I mean, the Lagrangian is interacting and, and the fields themselves are, look rather complicated. And that's why an important point is this uh, free field representation. So the argument goes along the following lines. The cigar possesses an asymptotic domain where the target manifold is flat and the theory is well, asymptotically free. So let's just choose a time slice when our fields take values over here. In other words, argument of u is very large and one can just ignore this term in the denominator and the Lagrangian becomes like introducing a coordinate becomes that of a free field theory. Phi is the modulus and alpha is the um, angular part of, of, of the complex field u. And the double current also just become very simple uh, combinations of, of these um, free fields, just as you can see here when well, fine alpha free chiral fields. And now since um, time evolution is a canonical transformation and the Poisson brackets are unchanged, these expressions, these W2 and W3s will satisfy the same Poisson bracket algebra as the more complicated versions I showed you on the previous slide. Um, and so um, this was sort of, we've bosonized in a sense, the uh, classical Poisson double infinity algebra. And we can just consider these fields and quantize, quantize these currents instead. Uh, sorry? I, I can hear you. Are you on? I can see. Yeah, yeah sorry. Uh, so far, this W occurs, this is uh, re just reformulation in terms of this phi's and alphas, but there is something else. This is first, and secondly, regarding with this WM and WM bar, do they? Form uh, Poisson close. Do they close for the Poisson algebra independently? But this is just a combination. So, so, sorry, just, just because of the echo, it's difficult. Can, can you just answer it without the microphone once? Just it's yeah. easier. For me. There's no echo. Sorry. Okay. I'm also going to they both together. So the Poisson, the Poisson bracket of WM and WM by is zero. That's okay. Yeah, so, okay. The fact that WM form a close Poisson bracket algebra is almost by definition, because if you get a chiral local field and you Poisson bracket with a chiral local field, you'll end up with a chiral local field. Sure, sure. So it's just, it's, there's nothing. Okay. Yeah. Now let's um, uh, consider the sort of next leading um, terms in the, in the expansion of the Lagrangian near the asymptotic domain. To a first approximation, one can still take alpha and phi to be free chiral fields. Then this term here, I've, I've split it up into two chiral parts. Um, I turned it into this product. So I split phi into you know, a chiral and anti-chiral field, which we can do because of the equations of motion. And I've written this term as a product of, of, of two terms. Now, a key observation is that these uh, W currents commute with the integral of this uh, interaction sort of term, this deformation term. So there's, there's a bit of slang coming in here, physical slang. They don't actually commute because of boundary terms, strictly speaking. What I mean is that the Poisson bracket of W with this um, current with this field is a total derivative in, in um, in U2, where U2 is the uh, variable 
going into this field. So, so strictly speaking, phi plus is not a periodic field. And that's why I'm going to say, like, as, as physical slang, I'm going to put a weaker quality sort of that it's equal to zero. Um, although, it, of course, there's a badger terms of. So it's, then um, it turns out that the W current up to the ambiguities that I mentioned before, so multiplying by constant and adding partial derivatives of lower fields, there's always this ambiguity, they can be reconstructed from these two conditions. First of all, that WM is a differential polynomial in these three fields of Lorentz spin M. So it's like a homogeneous polynomial. So the number of partial derivatives is always equal to M. And it commutes with this Pascal's Turing charge. And one can reconstruct it from these conditions. Given that these three fields, when we quantize the, uh, the, the field theory, right, we just, uh, we quantize phi plus and alpha as, as three fields, where k here is just a shortcut notation for the inverse Planck constant to get rid of, uh, and this normalization is being chosen so that these operator product expansions take this sort of standard, standard form of three fields. And then it turns out that for the uh, quantum screening charge, to quantize it, one just literally substitutes phi plus and alpha by the phi and, and theta, and one ignores the overall multiplicative constant because it doesn't really matter. Um, in general, this is not true. There will be quantum corrections. You can't, you, you can't just substitute like this, but it, this theory is sufficiently simple that the quantization of the screening charge is, is, is very is, is sort of trivial. And then similar as with the classical W currents, the quantum W currents can be reconstructed from two conditions. First of all, there are differential polynomial in D phi and D theta of spin Lorentz spin M. And secondly, they commute with the uh, quantum screening charge. Again, I put this weak equality. This is sort of like, should be treated sort of symbolically. What I really mean is that the operator product expansion of WM with this uh, sort of like vertex sort of operator is a total derivative in, in, in U2. Well, the singular part, so the singular part of the okay. Now, using this, one can reconstruct W2 and W3. Just, you know, I've given you some formulas. Right? They're not non-trivial. They contain a non-trivial dependence on the Planck constant. And um, of course, there's always this ambiguity. Uh, so once again, then I can multiply them by any constant. I can always, W3, I can always add partial W2. Um, it will still be at W3 prime. I just choices to be as simple as, uh, as possible. Um, and the commutation relations of this sort of algebra, this W algebra, is, is encoded in operator product expansions. In particular, for instance, this W2 is just the stress energy momentum tensor with central charge 2 plus 6 over K, or W3 is a spin-free primary field. One should uh, always remember that the um, UV limb of the sausage model is actually uh, two infinite cigars. And we've only just been focusing on the left cigar, but strictly speaking, all the same logic can be applied to the right cigar as well. And the W algebra will be the same as the left W algebra, but phi will be changed to minus phi uh, because phi is the longitudinal coordinate. And the W right algebra can actually be, um, well, reconstructed from, from the uh, uh, fact that it commutes with this new spinning charge, which is well, very simply related to the old one, but in general, you know, it, will be, it, it could be different uh, if you don't have this symmetry here. Now, um, the local ion are certain integrals over, uh, over tensor density, well, densities, I, will, uh, I guess tensor densities, but from uh, WM. And it turns out that they can sort of be reconstructed um, uh, exactly through the condition that they're even functions of phi. So, yeah, so in, in some sense, they belong to the intersection of these W algebras. Uh, and uh, in particular, they commute with both screening charges, both X0 and X1. Yeah, I've just, uh, well, I've calculated exactly for I1, uh, you know, you, like I1, if it exists, can only be an integral of W2. There's just no other W2 um, spin to uh, chiral currents. And notice that when we integrate this um, odd part on phi, just cancels it, it, it goes away. I3, in principle, can be a linear combination of W2 squared, W4, but then you can also have partial squared W2 and partial W3. But because these are total derivatives, we, we don't need to include them in the integral in our ansatz. 
And so you have these two unknown coefficients. And it turns out that if you, well, up to an overall multiplicative ambiguity, if you choose them this way, then um, this T4, this uh, sort of tender density, uh, is um, an even function of phi. Yeah, and, and this integral structure is fan by phi t. If you, well, it's a special case, I guess, of the more general one fan by phi t of 95. And it turns out that the local line exists for odd values of this uh, sort of index S, um, well, this index here, um, and they're unique onto overall uh, normalization. Oh, sorry, that's the wrong button. Um, okay. okay. Okay, so, so x0 and x1, in general, generally speaking, they're given by integrals over these, I call them vertex operators because they involve exponential fields. And they actually have some sort of meaning uh, in, in young backs integrability. So as you all know, in, in, well, um, as many of you might know, in um, lattice systems, you have some R matrix. And when you specify a presentation of the R matrix, you get a statistical mechanics model. Here, the situation is similar. When you specify a representation of the realization of E plus, B minus, say, in the Fox space in terms of free viral fields, you get some sort of representation of, of, of your, uh, so, sorry, um, it, it results in an integrable structure in C of T, just uh, similar as, as with lattice model. You get a different model each time you choose a representation. One of the simplest ones, and the first one that was studied was the KDV, and they're just given by this expression. B plus minus is realized in terms of, uh, one Fox space operator acting in one Fox space. Then there's the AKNS, which involves um, two fields, a bit more complicated, and actually the, the um, screening charges were, were obtained pretty um, pretty late, and it's uh, even the AKNS is well known. Then the sausage model that we uh, talked about, where it's just uh, yeah, d fed of plus minus to phi squared of k. And then there's a more general one that was um, first. Uh, uh, um, investigated by Fatih in 95, and it has two free parameters, not one, like, like the previous ones. And in fact, all the other integrable structures, KDV, AKNS, Sausage, are a special case of the Fatih of integrable structure. So one just has to fix the parameters, and then because the Hilbert space of the Fatih of structure is free bosons, free Fox spaces, and that would say the KDV is one Fox space, there's also some reduction. One has to get rid of states in order to get back to the, the KDV. Uh, I promised uh, to talk about the algorithm of constructing this local AM, and uh, it goes along the following lines. So as I said for the sausage, first of all, you construct the, you start with this one vertex operator V plus, and you construct the W algebra using this condition. That, uh, v plus partial U2, that, uh, yeah, that this operator product expansion, the singular part is a total derivative. So um, in general, it's a very special choice of V plus that will give you a non-trivial W algebra. And then you look for, um, finally, uh, uh, the second vertex, V minus, comes in uh, to construct the uh, local integrals of motion. And you just look for a um, differential polynomial in WM such that these tensor densities in the integral uh, obey this uh, expansion, where it's very important that the uh, one over this uh, residue term so is a total derivative. And then because IS is integrated over DU and, and X, X1 is also integrated, one could say that sort of the, the eyes commute with the uh, screening charges. And it was proven a lot later that apparently if IS um, commute with these screening charges, then they also commute with themselves and they form a mutual commuting uh, family. So uh, in, our, in our paper with uh, Lukianov in the recent work, we also uh, proposed a set of uh, vertex operators that um, create um, a non-trivial uh, integrable structure. Um, they're sort of rather complicated expressions. They're a bit more complicated than uh, what, what I showed you for the KDV or the sausage. In particular, they involve I-independent Karabosa fields and I-independent Fatih's and all of uh, ZK parathermians. So these, uh, these are actually not the final vertex operators that go into the integral. These are just some intermediate ones. And they depend on um, these constants k, they go into the uh, parafermions ka, also on this beta, which is a continuous parameter that goes from zero to one. Uh, one can think of these uh, parafermions just maybe intuitively by the bosonization formula. They just, they can be bosonized in terms of two, um, uh, two bosons, ignoring issues of representation field. Um, 
uh, the key bosons into these uh, two, two, uh, sorry, two, two free bosons, and then the formula looks uh, this way. Also, uh, yeah, okay. Also, I'll use the notation K as just the sum of these uh, integers. Then let's also, um, apart from these VAs, let's just introduce um, R arbitrary complex numbers, Z1 all the way to ZR, it can be whatever you like. And we define these X0s and X1s in, in, in this way. So X0 is just V plus A, but here these R H2 constants come in. And we propose that this sort of um, uh, forms an integrable structure of SL2 type, uh, depending on these uh, R parameters ZA and in this case, the multiparametric integrable family. Of a subtle type. So usually, if, if I were to just you know write a random vertex operator off the top of my head and start considering this, uh, well, oh, Jesus Christ, sorry. Um, yes, and I started uh, looking at this relation. Um, usually, I wouldn't get any um, non-trivial W algebra, right? Um, I just no comments would satisfy some trivial comments would satisfy this and wouldn't be very interesting. But uh, for the choice given here, we conjecture and we check this on numerous examples that there does exist a non trivial W algebra for any R integers R and KA. Remember, R is just the number of fields and parafermion and, and bosonic fields. And in particular, the role of the stress energy momentum tensor is played by this uh, W2 sort of current. There's a bit of a um, Sorry, there's a bit of notation. Uh, okay, well, it's played by this W2 current here, but W2A with, with, with some abuse of notation um, is just the stress energy momentum tensor corresponding to the paraphernalic fields. And in terms of the uh, bosonized relations, it's, it's given by this formula. And the central chart, you can just read it off from these um, partial derivatives from, from these terms here, and, and it's given by uh, this, this equation. And then also, it's not, well, I mean, if I choose randomly a V minus, also there's no guarantee that I'm going to get that in the commuting system work into this emotion. But uh, it turns out that with this choice here, with these extra parameters that you do get, it, it, it does work. And we conjecture that there exists um, for every, so, so there only exists for odd, odd values of this, um, of this index. And for every single odd value of this index, there's R linearly independent low quantiples of motion. Now, that this uh, field theory is, is, is probably very, very abstract and, and, and maybe difficult to, to understand or get a feeling for. And that's why in the next slide, I'd just like to um, show you um, all the simplest low quantiples of motion, sort of the I1s, which correspond to, you know, the, sort of the Hamilton, like the, like the quadratic, like the stress and momentum tensor, but there's other of them. In order to write down the formula, it's useful to take these uh, uh, combinations uh, of, the, of these paraphernalic and bosonic fields and, and, and make these combinations uh, here and here. And then it turns out that JA and plus minus and JA zero, they satisfy the operator pair of expansion uh, corresponding to SL2 Katz Moody currents. So if you, one considers the OPE, well, first of all, they're local fields. Um, the paraphernalic are not local, but if you take these combinations, they become local fields. And they satisfy this um, OPE, where e, e to AB and is, is just the um, structure constant. Well, for the SL2 algebra, if you choose the basis of Pauli matrix, it's just delta AB. And FABC is, is the, um, uh, sorry, and E to AB is the killing form, FABC is the structure constant for the SL2 algebra. Also, let's introduce this um, Gurusura field via this sort of, uh, I guess, Sugawara uh, construction which, I mean, all these GAs are independent, they can meet with each other. And, and these GAs would, would be the um, Urosaur field corresponding to each uh, copy. And then the uh, formula for the um, first non-trivial local IM is given here. It's, um, I understand it's uh, rather complicated, but you see it depends on K, which is the sum of these integers. It depends on beta which is this arbitrary parameter from zero to one. Um, and it can also depends on these um, arbitrary complex parameters that they. Now, at, at this point, uh, this formula probably um, also doesn't say very much to, to, to anyone. And that's why I'd just like to um, take a, a simplifying limit. 
So one can consider the limit where um, this little beta goes to one. You notice here that you have terms, you know, for a singular and, and terms that go to zero. So along with this limit, one needs to rescale the field, for example, uh, rescale H. So it's a bit technical. It's not just plugging beta equals to one to this formula. And then after you do this limit, you also consider the limit where these ZAs go to infinity. So I will go to zero. So epsilon ZA will epsilon go to zero. And then if you perform these limits uh, carefully, one obtains a much simpler form of the Hamiltonians here. And it, so a much simpler form of the uh, Hamiltonians here. Um, ETAB is the killing form. GA and GB are the Osora fields. J are the currents. Um, and these formula actually appeared in a paper, 2007 paper by Higgin and Frankel, quantization of uh, soliton systems, uh, uh, Langmuir duality, and they're known as the Afhangadan model Hamiltonians. In fact, here we're considering it. One has to keep in mind that we're considering SL2 here. But Higgin and Frankel, well, it's but this, this, this can be defined for any Katsumudi algebra G hat, where J is just the Katsumudi currents and D is G, B can be obtained for the um, well, be obtained for the Sugolara construction, or more generally, integral of GA is the, grade, is the um, grading uh, operator of these algebras. So, so these uh, Hamiltonians, I, I just, um, to give some, a bit more intuition, uh, why it's called the Badan model, for instance, I'd like to take another, uh, think of another simplifying limit and uh, these, these Hamiltonians that were actually inspired by the work of the Badan um, so in, in, in 76, I guess. So Gudan considered the following problem. Let's just take um, you know, uh, R copies of S the SL2 algebra, R independent copies, and let SA and SB be the generators of this uh, SL2 algebra. They obey the standard you know, commutation relation, epsilon ABC, just, a, just normal. They can be realized, for instance, as the Pauli matrices of small one half. And let's construct these uh, Hamiltonians, uh, which depend on these R independent parameters. And Godin showed, first of all, that these Hamiltonians mutually commute. And secondly, that the problem of their simultaneous diagonalization is solvable by the Godin So this forms a, a commuting family of, of uh, Hamiltonians. And Fiegen and Franco on their paper in writing this formula. So th this formula can be. Um, uh, generalized to any Lie group, simple Lie group, and Fig and Frankel just tried to generalize it to a affine, uh, affine Lie algebra. Sorry, sorry for, for Lie algebra. I mean. Of course, one you know one can of course straightforwardly try to generalize these affine Lie algebras, but then some some questions occur. Uh, first of all, I mean, is, is this mean? Is this a meaningful generalization? So, is there a bit on that? Are there higher local IM? Does it fit within sort of the standard notion of, of how we understand integrability in in, in the Baxter integrable systems? So these uh, so, so there are these questions get on that high spin local IM. And one of the key tools that Fagan and Frankel proposed to study these issues is known as the uh, ODIQ of T correspondence. It was actually uh, inspired by the work of Godin. But then, uh, uh, well, for him, it was just a curious observation that the uh, um, eigenvalues of normal affine, uh, the non-affine, the sort of easy uh, Hamiltonians are encoded, uh, can be encoded in, 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 in certain differential equations. Right? Uh, and Fig and, and Frankel, they, um, they decided to, they proposed an OD based on uh, Godin's and, and of course, the work of other people, but the original observation of Paul Godin. Um, and they, they proposed some ODE IQFT correspondence and said that this ODE would encode the eigenvalues of these system commuting Hamiltonians. So the answer to the get so, so, so just by, well, essentially from the study of the, well, uh, from our point of view, we consider it the study of the monogamy properties of the ODE. Higgin and Frankel put forward a bit on that, but it was completely conjectural and they didn't even explain how the um, energies can be obtained from this bit on that or anything. It was very much conjectural. And they uh, conjectured that there were uh, high spin local IM, that, they, that these high spin local IM just exist. And it was just a conjecture. Uh, some, well, uh, some of these answers, uh, some of these questions, sorry, were, were of course studied later. Um, 
uh, say in the work of La Croix de Sedillan, who um, wrote a first paper about what their view is about how these are uh, high level AM, what they look like. Uh, and, and then in the second paper, just constructed I, this, the, sec the second non trivial IM, showed that it commuted uh, for the case of the SLM, affine SLM algebra. So in our work with Lukyana, we sort of um, also, um, because this is obviously a very um, useful tool for studying this problem, we also propose an ODI QFT correspondence for what we call as the generalized affine Badan model because of this extra trigonometric deformation parameter beta. Um, and it takes this form. Uh, in blue, I've highlighted the differences between the ODE that's obtained in Big and Frankel's work. So there's some generalizations, including here and, and also a general um, a term over here. And the parameters in this ODE are related to the parameters of the integrable structure. So in particular, chi here is just very simply related to beta, beta, beta squared over one minus beta squared. A and J, J A are already so, so these uh, integrals of motion, they're built, they're represented in, 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 a, in a certain subspace of the tensor product of parafermionic and bosonic modulus. And A and J, these integers here and here, are just are related to the highest web, weight of the um, irreducible, well, we, we think it's an irreducible representation of this uh, W algebra. Uh, ZA, of course, are parameters the same as in, 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 in the Hamiltonians, and gamma A, big gamma A, and W alpha satisfy system algebraic equations that ensure that the um, monodromy, uh, prop, that, that the uh, point at Z equals ZA is monodromy free in the sense that any solution, if you go around it, is, is well, gets back to itself up to a minus sign. Um, so there's no sort of logarithm, because in general, if you have an idea of this form, you go around, you, there's a logarithm in the solution, and it won't be single valued. But here it's a single valued. And we also, well, in detail, we explain how the, you know, how the eigenvalues of H, and in fact, all the intervals of motion can be obtained from this uh, differential equation by a straightforward WKB analysis. And, you know, we, we obtained formulas such as these in terms of ZA, the W beta, which satisfy the um, algebraic system of equations. There's a one-to-one -one correspondence basically between the uh, solutions in the states. So this gives all the, the full spectrum. Uh, so all this notation should be familiar, except the Ds. The Ds are some certain uh, combinations of the case, just very simple combinations. I just didn't have space to um, write them out. I wanted to um, keep the notation uh, to a minimum. So that's basically our time, 45 minutes. Uh, so let me just um, let me just conclude then with a bit of a discussion. So, so what, 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 what I talked about in this talk was a certain quantization scheme for, for general integrable field theories, which starts from an analysis of the uh, UV fixed point and tries to build an integrable structure there. Uh, it turns out this is useful. Uh, so, for instance, the results of, I guess, Mikhina, Spadinenko, Fire, Alfimov, on these, well, these new results, on these uh, on models and so on, well, uh, rely a lot on, on, on these sort of constructions. And also, uh, in my paper with Lukian uh, um, from from the uh, where we solved the O3 model, of course, also relies a lot on this uh, analysis of the UV fixed point. Now, the UV fixed point, the reason why this is a good idea is because there's an algorithmic construction, very straightforward, well, reasonably straightforward, of the local AM and the conformal field theory using this notion of uh, screening charges. Uh, in this, most of my talk was, was basically, I guess, about this, but I also gave some new results, which was the reali new realization of these vertex operators that go into the screenings, which results in a multi parametric integrable system that can be thought of as a um, generalization of the affine uh, SL2 uh, down model. And finally, in the spirit of, I guess, Higgin Frankel, we proposed an ODI QFT correspondence for this. Um, well, I just showed you the OD that describes the eigenvalues of this commuting family. Now, uh, there's a lot of stuff that I didn't say, just because it's a 45 minute talk and it's a varied audience. Um, so I had to keep it to a minimum. But, once you have the screening charges, it's very straightforward to um, construct the transfer matrices and the backs of Q operators in the spirit of the original BLZ papers. And of course, we do this, and they're related to certain uh, spectral determinants of the ordinary differential equation. Um, and finally, um, there's also lattice discretization. Uh, well, it's proposed that this, similar how the KDV arises in the scaling room of the XXZ spin chain, 
uh, we, we suppose that this, uh, well, we conjecture, we checked for some values that this sort of, uh, this integrable structure arises in the scale of, of something that we call the Baxter type statistical system, which in the simplest case is just an inhomogeneous six vertex model. And maybe the most interesting uh, future direction that, that I would see is, is um, what, what would be the uh, classical field theory considering uh, corresponding to this integrable structure, which field theory we need to take the U the limit of to, to see these um, uh, integrals of motion. And given that this is a generalization of the uh, SL2 Afan Badan model, we probably expect it to be a bunch of uh, SL2 type uh, interacting uh, nonlinear signal models of the type that similar to what's in uh, this paper by Dolby Okama and this year. Thank you for your attention. Many thanks, uh, Gleb, for the very nice talk. So it's now time for questions. I see that uh, Costas Fetzos already has uh, uh, a question from, uh, from Zoom. Please, Costas. Thank you very much. Uh, I have a couple of questions. One, I think it was, uh, there was a Lagrangian on page eight of your talk. What, eight? And, uh, Pay eight. Okay. Okay. There in that Lagrange in the upper left corner, uh, I see one parameter, kappa. I was wondering why the two terms in the denominator do not have a different, um, uh, well, kappa one and kappa two, let's say. Uh, does it have to do with integrability? They have to be equal or inverse to each other? So, so the form of this uh, Lagrangian is very special because it needs to have a, a classical, um, um, it, there needs to be zero curvature representation for the equation of motion and that puts strong constraints in the uh, form. So integrability, I missed, integrability dictates that they are related? Integrability dictates that the Lagrangian has to have this form and you can't change it by okay okay that's uh, okay. now the other the other question or, or remark is the following uh, about page 10 or a few pages after this you started uh, considering the sl2r over u1 uh, sigma model cosette conformal field theory and you constructed a w in w algebra of, of high spins two and higher so in the early 90s, there was a, some work by Bakas and Kiritsis who did uh, quite a bit of work uh, in that direction, uh, considering the sigma model and constructed W infinity symmetries or even at the classical or even at the quantum level. I was wondering what is the relation of your work to this old work? Or I, I, if you are not aware, then okay. Sorry, um, I just because of the echo, it's, it's really difficult. Um, uh, Costas, I, I ask you to maybe not stay too close to your microphone because I think uh, sometimes uh, it's difficult to understand. Okay. So uh, the, how, how the question it? of Costas, how, uh, the, can, the question of talk, Costas was to... Can you talk without the microphone? Can you just... Uh, uh, without the microphone... Uh, maybe, can, maybe you can write on the chat. Uh, uh, the, the work you're referring to, the Costas was asking how to relate your work yes. to an old paper by Kiritsis and I missed uh, the, other, the other name. There was, okay, so is it better, by the way, I'm writing, but uh, I hope uh, you can understand something of what I'm saying. I'm, I'm sorry, it's just like, I think I understand about 70% and, and some keywords, uh, uh, and just to be sure about the question, and it's, it's really easy to understand someone. Uh, on... Oh, how is this paper related to the work of Buck? How, how is my work? Uh, yeah, was... but, yes, how is it related? Because they considered uh, W algebras or this Cosset, both quantum and classical. So if you are not aware of the work, that's okay. But if you are, maybe you have um, tried to find the connection because it's a well-established work. It's not, uh, 
something I'm sorry, I know. I, I have to look at it. I'm to, you can please send me an email and I could uh, answer you by email. Oh. By the email. But this, okay. Um, you you have the you have the names. You can search. Thank you. I, I can search. Yes, sorry. About this. I'm glad uh, I have always also two questions, but I'm less clever than Costas. I don't remember uh, the number of slides, but at some point you gave a formula for the operator product expansion of the W quantities. And if you can get the uh, OPE of what? Uh, operator OPE of W quantities. Uh, just a question. Yes, this is uh, uh, OPE in Minkowski or in Euclidean region? Um, well, uh, um, I, 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 I guess uh, one, one can. Uh, well, it's important. It's Euclidean or it's Minkowski? I mean, I mean, one, one can say so. So it's um. I, I'd, I'd like to, uh, what's it called, um, uh, when, when presenting these relations, right? Um, w2 is, is a field uh, that depends on a single variable u, for instance, right? Yeah. With, um, uh, whose, whose mode satisfies some uh, uh, commutation relations, right? Mm -hmm. and, and this just encodes the commutation relations of this. So, so one can consider this uh, w2 abstractly even without any uh, um, Euclidean or Minkowski, that's some extra Wait, information. If it's Minkowski, U is periodic, and it looks in a polynomial way in the denominator, if I'm not mistaken. So it doesn't make much sense. What, what doesn't make sense, sir? Uh, U, if you add the U to pi, you, you should obtain the same, or same object, isn't it? Okay, so, so, so um, when we consider the OPEs, we consider two operators uh, coming very close together. Yeah. Um, and, and they actually don't depend on the boundary conditions, the OPEs. Uh, uh, maybe the regular terms do, but the singular terms do not. The Greens mm -hmm. function, of course, does depend. Yes, it's but, true that singular term probably but, not. But still, I would like to know in, in, in which way, you know, because if the theory is conformal, it doesn't really matter. You can, by radio quantization, travel to Minkowski to Euclidean very simply. If it's not conformal, this is a tricky business. And so this is the reason why I asked that. And the second question is more conceptual. At some point, you know, this sausage model is a particular example of those young Baxter deformations. And I don't know if Vizedo is listening to your talk right now virtually, but he discovered the connection of this affine godown models, uh, young Daxa deformation and affine Godard models, which is exact. And in your case, it seems to be that you recover uh, affine Godard model only in some limit. So can you comment on this? Yeah, of course I can. So, so there's some, uh, there's a bit of uh, confusion in, in, in the literature actually, actually about this, right? Um, uh, it's, it's actually a, a, a very confusing point. Uh, so um, sort of like, at least the way it is in the literature, the study of the classical field theory and questions about, you know, multi classical field theories, right, is, is sort of separate. There's a break between this and the uh, quantum field theories. So if, for instance, you have a massive uh, uh, nonlinear signal model and you have a um, Gadan interpretation of this, right, um, for example, right, this, of course, is very useful for, for um, uh, interpreting the Poisson structure, right? Mm -hmm. But at least it hasn't been demonstrated in the literature. And uh, I just, uh, I, I personally, it's, it's, I assume that when you quantize all of this Godin structure disappears and doesn't, doesn't exist. Well, I might, um, I mean, this year there's an expert on this, but it hasn't been proven to be quantized, okay? Uh, it, it, there's, there's major difficulties in the quantization. So this is one description. now. One can consider the CFT limit, right? Now this Godin model, its phase space will break up into two chiral parts, right? Which are also, I guess, um, uh, each one of which would, I assume, be uh, um, uh, where was the Hamiltonians, which would be described by some integral structure like this, right? And now the quantization of this along the lines of Yang-Bax integrability is a well-defined procedure and has been demonstrated in a lot of field theories. Uh, 
Um, so, so one has to sort of be careful and think about two different sort of um, stories. One is uh, sort of mapping the space of interclassical integrable field theories, right, which is very good and one of the useful. And the other one is quantizing the specific CFT limits of, you know, a specific well when it's well behaved as a formal algebraic uh, formal algebraic procedure that's discussed say in Fagan Frankel 07 and, and they're different. Um, yes, but maybe but why then if you know that this is this your model fits in this schema of more general schema of young Baxter deformation, why did you not try to, to quantize not just this particular example but uh, so young Baxter sigma models or whatever group you know what I mean? Maybe there are more structures that to be discovered, but you consider why just one quantization of one particular example, and you know that there exists that this model is is just one member of family of bigger family of models. So maybe if you quantize the bigger family at the same time, you you, you should see more structure. You know what I mean. Oh, so you mean maybe instead of focusing on the sausage, straight away focus on some multiparametric? Yeah, yeah. Um, just, uh, I mean, the way this field has evolved, we, we usually start with the simplest examples, uh, and then we sort of increase in complexity. But I, I agree with you that uh, in, in the context of uh, this, this work, maybe with, with these uh, Hamiltonians, it might be interesting to, to try to quantize uh, these SL2 class type models. Also, let me comment that going to higher rank is a significant difficulty in, in this young backs integrability. It significantly increases the complexity. And so, um, well, I, I guess you can get results, but um, it's, it's also it's difficult. But I know that you are very strong with computers. So maybe, <laughs> <laughs> you know. There's also some uh, thinking required. So <laughs> it's not quite so easy. More questions? We have a question from Patrick Dori. Hi, thanks. Um, yeah, this probably probably related, not echo this uh, related to the last question. Um, I remember as well as sausage models, there were pillow brains and these sorts of things that were discussed in the past. Can you fit these sorts of ideas into your... Which one's brains, you said? Like boundary conditions? The word pillow comes to mind. It was a paper by the Zanologicals and perhaps Sergei as well. Look, I, I personally ha haven't considered it. We've just been uh, focusing on, I mean, even the quantization of local integrals of motions itself um, in the sausage model, highly non trivial. And I guess we've been focusing on these uh, basic questions. Uh, uh, yes. If you send me a link, I could take a look. But, uh, sorry. Well, look, look, I mean, this, this is a future direction, uh, and, and we definitely uh, well, okay. haven't, haven't studied it. Um, I mean, it's definitely not going to be end copies. It's not going to be as simple as uh, end copies of the cigar model. It will be so. <laughs> We, we, we've done no, no, no research on, on this point, but as far as we understand, it's a straightforward. Well, oh, okay. well I think it's relatively straightforward. Oh. I mean, following the procedure I did for the cigar, for, for, for um, well, one has to have the classical field theory in the first place, right? Um, start and then, you know, take the UV limits and, and see what happens and then try to, uh, I mean, it, at, at the very least, there'll be some subclass of these uh, Godin, uh, you know, well, this integral structure. Oh, yeah, and also starting from these, you can also, yeah, you, well, it's, it's complicated, but um, we, we have a paper on this, on the yang baxter Poisson algebra in non natural local systems, I think, and using the logic of this work, although the, this is where the computer skills do really, would probably really come in, because it's not conceptually not very difficult. You probably could take the first one. Yeah, 
Do we have more questions for Gleb? Yes, Costas. Hey, I have one more question. Uh, thanks for the talk at first. Have you considered also the, the FATF sausage model, the three dimensional model, which is related to the Bayard Baxter model and the limit can be also for the sports sphere? It has been also shown to be integral by Lucchiano and also by Stirat, in a sense, since it's related to the Bayard Baxter. Of course, the um, uh, integral FATF integral structure that mm. appears, the, the, the FATF integral structure that appears in the CFT limit of the uh, well SCL2 Klimchik model uh, of course is a, is a special case of, um, of what I have here. I think it's a, a one or two one side two sides I, I don't remember exactly I think it's two sides and, uh, um, but yeah but the, the Fatiev I, I should say uh, more has been done for the Fatiev I mean they've uh, it's been massive theory in some sense has been solved um, in the sense that the sort of like a PDEIM correspondence where the local intervals of motion are encoded in, in, a, in a partial differential equation. Um, in solution, there's a, there's, it, it's been better studied than, than, than what I presented here. The, the, there's results about the massive case, not just the UV fixed point. All right, so if there are no more questions for, for Gleb, let's thank him again for the nice talk.